no matter what. There was two people in this vehicle. The John Doe number two, and there was a $2 million price put on his head, and now they're saying there's no John Doe number two. And our witnesses picked out a photo lineup. The news channel shared the information and surveillance tapes of this man with the FBI. They've had some of that material long before our reports went on the air. In the building, and uh, I was looked out the window, and I seen uh, a dog's truck, and I seen the man get out of the dog's truck. She was just 10 feet away from the man depicted in this sketch when he stepped out of the rider truck. Oh, uh, he was all of complexion, and he was... Uh, he had black curly hair. He was wearing the baseball cart, but his curls were sticking out of his head. Uh, his short in the back, but uh, you could still see the curls in his hair. He was not American. He was foreign. You can tell by his his skin, his face. The way his face was. We asked if I Dan Vogel if John Doe number two is still part of the investigation. Does he exist? The answer, yes. The FBI is still trying to locate and identify John Doe number two. The man in our reports is Iraqi. Today the FBI says they are not pursuing a Middle Eastern connection. This doesn't mean it has been ruled out. That could change tomorrow. State, local, and federal police around the country actually detained dozens of Middle Eastern men trying to exit the country. Former Iraqi Republican Guard officers like Al Husseini Hussein. Despite all this evidence, the Clinton Justice Department said, release them. We don't want to talk to them. There is no Middle Eastern connection. In the making of this documentary film, our team has interviewed scores of former FBI agents, current FBI agents, police officers, detectives who were on the scene and who worked the case. They detained, they arrested members of the Iraqi Republican Guard while trying to flee the United States. They would open up their bags and find blue jogging suits, bomb-making materials. They would try to hold them, try to charge them. They could have convicted them in front of a jury, according to my sources. But Bill Clinton demanded their release. Later, I interviewed David Shippers, the man that impeached Bill Clinton, that brought down the mob in Chicago. And David Shippers stated that the Oklahoma City bombing team was the same people involved in the World Trade Center attack on September 11th. And guess what? Al Husseini Hussein was actually working in the Boston airport. It's amazing. Now we see the grand plan of the feds. These people are actually working for them. All the evidence shows. And the details are chilling. We'll also focus on surveillance cameras, cameras that caught the bombing on tape, and maybe the men behind the bombing. The news channel has new information tonight that there's a chance surveillance tapes could be the smoking gun evidence. Now, we ask candid questions in a rare face to face meeting with ATF officials close to the investigation. We learned that video collected from downtown businesses the morning of April 19th may someday be played before a jury. Officials won't say who or what exactly is on the tape. However, Numerous sources have confirmed the tapes exist and that they reveal more than one bomber. So what evidence are they asking for? They're asking for video taken from the rider truck from the Rigi Towers. Shana. Well, Kevin, it's a question we've all been asking. We've been asking that question since we first broke the story that surveillance cameras aimed at the federal building could have captured all those involved on tape. Now, sources have confirmed those tapes exist and that they show more than one bomber. The FBI also confirmed those tapes exist when they refused to release them, claiming the video is part of a criminal investigation. And now, for the first time, we get an on-the-record response from the head of the Dallas office, ATF. We learned that videotape could be unveiled as part of the prosecution's case. No officials, will, no officials will discuss specifically what's on the video, but we have been able to recreate some of what may have been captured by downtown surveillance cameras through the eyes of the witnesses. Now, you're looking at a computer recreation of the final movements of the rider truck according to the people who crossed its path at 5th and Harvey, moments before the explosion. Tonight at 10, the witnesses will detail their memories of how they believe the suspects carried out the crime and made their getaway. Now, all these accounts share a common and unsettling similarity. The witnesses say they saw several accomplices, including the infamous John Doe No. 2. ATF officials tell us the elusive John Doe is still part of this case, but will not comment any further. However, they did tell us that there's a lot about this case we don't know yet, information you can't find in the indictments against Timothy McVeigh, Terry Nichols, and Michael Fortier. It was just hours after the bombing when the news channel first told you about the possibility that surveillance cameras may have captured the explosion and the killers on tape.
Our sources and sources for the L.A. Times describe what's actually on those tapes. The information shows some huge surprises, the biggest that it may have been John Doe number 2, not Timothy McVeigh, who detonated the bomb. Brad Edwards has the latest on the investigation in this exclusive News Channel report. Our new information comes directly from a source that has seen parts of those surveillance tapes. It also comes from reports now in the Los Angeles Times. But perhaps the biggest surprise is contained in the News Channel's own information. Timothy McVeigh was not the last person to leave the Ryder truck. In fact, another man sat inside the cab of the truck after McVeigh got out. We believe that man is John Doe number two, a man who, for all we know, is still on the loose, leaving open a vital question. Was it John Doe number two who actually set off the bomb, not Timothy McVeigh, as we've all been led to believe? News Channel 4 has for weeks been demanding copies of the surveillance tapes from the FBI. The federal government so far is dragging its feet. But many people in the investigation have seen the tapes, and now so has a source willing to describe to the News Channel what the tapes show. The L.A. Times report shows there was a surveillance camera near the corner of 5th and Harvey and another near the corner of 5th and Robinson. Federal investigators recreated the time sequence leading up to the bombing by matching the video and still photos from the surveillance cameras. Since we can't show you the tape ourselves, we're reenacting what our source says he saw on those tapes. As witnesses told the news channel before, the tapes show the Ryder truck parked in front of the Murrah building where we now know the blast went off. As witnesses also told us, the tapes show two men sitting inside the Ryder truck. A man strongly resembling Timothy McVeigh gets out of the driver's side, steps down. He then appears to have dropped something on the step up into the truck. He bends down and appears to pick something up off the step. Then he turns and walks directly across 5th Street toward the Journal Record building. All this time, John Doe number 2 is still inside the Ryder truck's cab sitting on the passenger side. Time passes. The surveillance tape is time-lapse photography. Without knowing exactly the time interval between shots, our source can't be sure how long John Doe number two sat in that cab. What was he doing all that time? Then the tape shows John Doe number two getting out of the passenger side of the Ryder truck. Again, the tape shows that a bombing witness accurately described what happened next to News Channel 4. I was standing in the building, and uh, I was looked out window and I seen uh, a Dolores truck and I seen a man get out of the Dolores truck. The tape shows John Doe number two getting out, shutting the passenger side door. He steps toward the front of the truck and is momentarily out of the frame of the surveillance camera. But shortly he appears back in frame walking toward the rear of the truck, still on the sidewalk in front of the Murrah building. Again, he turns east toward the front of the truck, looking toward the street. John Doe number two then walks diagonally across 5th Street toward the east, as if heading toward the YMCA or the intersection of 5th and Robinson. He again leaves the frame of the camera. Another camera shooting from another angle clearly shows the actual explosion that destroyed the federal building and killed 169 people. So what does the mysterious John Doe number two look like in the tape? The man who stayed inside the Ryder truck, possibly triggering the bomb? Well, his features are obscured by a baseball cap in the portion of tape seen by our source. The same kind of cap shown in the composite drawing first released of John Doe number 2. The cap was a sports cap, flame style. The man himself was taller than the man resembling McVeigh and much thicker in build. He appears to have a dark or olive complexion. Our source saw only a few minutes of tape. He didn't see all of the almost 20 minutes of surveillance tapes that reportedly were distributed to FBI agents around the country to help in their investigation. But they do show enough to raise some crucial questions. Who actually set off the bomb? What was John Doe number 2 doing in the cab of the truck after the McVeigh lookalike got out? And how did John Doe number two get away from the Murrah building? Uh, my understanding is there was a video of McVeigh getting out of the Ryder truck, jumping into this other pickup with John Doe number two. Uh, well, where's that video? Are we ever going to get to see it? Do you realize what you've just seen, America? The government had multiple surveillance camera tapes. In fact, when it finally came out in court, when the federal government declared in 2001 that they wouldn't release the videotapes because of national security implications, that there were actually 12 surveillance camera tapes that had had these different Islamic individuals, these Arabic men with McVeigh and others. 
as well as the BATF uh, hiding out right down the street, uh, preparing to pounce on the operation and...